Hello everyone and thank you for coming to my YouTube channel and if it's your first time welcome to my YouTube channel Deb Chanel's 48th World. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe and share my videos okay. But we're going to be going over what is this Tamar and Vince season 5 episode 1. Oh thing I have to tell you in my prince voice <laughs> It's like, girl, that's a hot mess. And Cat Williams, you know, it's just like the elf needs to just, you know, take place. They need a divorce. Whether they need to go or not, that is the question. If you were depending on me to make their decision for them, they need a divorce. They never should have married. They just should have had a business arrangement. Okay? They never should have had a baby either to tell you the truth because Paul Logan is going to be definitely devastated when they do get a divorce but it's probably for the best because if we got violent tempers running around now we don't need to have baby Logan mixed in the mix but let's go on and get on into this episode we got Vince and Tamar outside talking about Vince having a second surgery Tamar ain't here for it she said she ain't here for it I almost scared her to death when he had all those blood clots I almost scared her to death when she had her little blood clot situation. It's just not a good look. Not a good look. It wasn't no time for Tamar to lose no more weight because she's already small. But I understand what Vince's saying. He ain't feeling himself. He's been fat probably the majority of his life. I don't know why he didn't have the surgery prior to Logan coming in the world or before Tamar started to be more extra than normal. You know what I'm saying? While she was going through her tinkering and fixing on herself and all this that and the third Vince should have been doing the same thing he getting up in age and he want to have this that and the third done to himself I'm like come on you just had this situation I'm on Tamar boat with that but guess what we married each other we're supposed to be one thinking as one connecting as one and we're not even doing that so hey let have if you want to go on and have this surgery if it were me i would tell me like okay have, is your insurance paid up life insurance barrier insurance good me and logan gonna be taken care of okay go on and have your surgery honey because i can't tell you what to do i can't make you feel happy about yourself if taking the extra weight off from the flap that came uh on your body and just hanging on your body after you had this major weight loss surgery okay fine take it off we know that's another step to it too like you being so obese all this extra weight clinging skin sagging all of that i guess you do want to tuck in your pants now and be able to see your belly and, and your foot and all that go ahead do you but let you know on paper and verbally i told you i didn't think it was a good idea so if you go meet your if you go meet the maker the creator of the world and human beings itself the whole creation you tell him for me i didn't send you early i didn't send you to an early grade you sent yourself i gave you all the four warmings but hey i can't i can't make you not do something you could leave me one day gone to the hospital have your surgery and call me and tell me you did it come take care of you you know what i'm saying yeah i will cuss you out this damn third but then i'll be glad that you're still living okay but you got to you know be with all those aches and pains and having nurses around you because i ain't gonna be doing all that especially when i told you i didn't want you to do it you know and then you did it behind my back and all this that and third but see vince coming straight forward so look i need to have this done i want this done i don't necessarily have to tell you but since you're my wife i'm just getting your feet i'm just giving you some feedback and i don't really want to hear all your chit chatter for the negative that you don't want me to do it because i'm gonna get it done even busy you know was like okay tornado hurricane tsunami tame i'm gonna come out the woodworks and get on your ass about he like yeah i got it. i understand but it's my body guess what so he had to fall back because that's you know another dude with another dude you feel like you want to do it. i don't told you how i feel i don't told you how your wife gonna feel about it and you all set up for that kind of humiliation degradation just that in the earth third go ahead do you boo do you i'll be at your funeral or i'll be at your um got over the surgery party however you want to put it i'd be at even one okay and we would have just let it roll and it just been between him and lower pretty much then we got tamar going around having a little interview with um bay up uh talking about her new album her new song that was a banging hit just then third they spiking it all up doing what they have to do and i'm like go ahead tamar do your thing get your little um interviews out there that'll stay focused which is stay relevant in social media so they can go out there and buy your album girl okay and um yeah that was just baby baby smith uh doing her thing with table 
Oh, do we have um James and uh which I'm pretty sure y'all know who James is. Um he's the at Patty LaBelle person that came out selling her pies more uh, faster than she ever could have sold her little pecan not pecan pies, but sweet potato pies. You know, he was a viral sensation. And this little skit right you're seeing now here is just Tamar kind of filling in. I'm giving you the actual look when Tamar was in the hospital and how Vince had to take care of her and they were scared about her having blood clots this then third and then they're discussing that he went to the doctor done solidified that his doctor done told him pretty much yeah he can go and have surgery do what you want to do and the doctor didn't really say that she says your choice pretty much but she's just giving him all the details of having surgery what it could cause and the main factor she was talking to him about was trying to stop the blood from flowing you know he had to take this medication he had to get off this medication and it's just all concerned about bleeding to death why are you having this situation but you know he even uh tossed the doctor to the side like i hear what you're saying but again then it still is my choice is it not she was like yeah still your choice but i'm just giving you you know what could happen so while he was meeting with you know you know the doctor and stuff and you know logan and and uh, baby Logan and um, Tamar, you know, they call themselves pretty much having a uh, conversation where they were making a pie or cake or something. While Vince gonna call himself, meet with his buddies and and, and really wasn't it his buddies? It was family members, really like his cousin, nephew, just that. And th I don't know, you know, I'm just like okay, I thought you mean with your boys, but I guess your boys could be your family members too. I don't know. But basically, the whole thing was just tossed around, should he have the surgery or not. Then we got Tamar going around here, getting prepared for her showing or her little club scene she's going to do at some off club called the Law for a Union or somewhere. I don't know if it was in New York or California. It really didn't matter at this time. But the performance was horrible. Her dancers were late coming on stage. I mean, it was like a hole-in-the-wall type of club. So I'm like, Vince, where are you booking Tamar at these days, okay? Don't we have a, a, a higher standard of where we're going with performances, even if they're at local clubs in our state? I mean, come on, you, you, look, you just took her to a hole in a while. The mics weren't right, the sound wasn't right, the dancers were late. Vince, Vince don't bother, he's behind on stage checking with the folks that's, you know, in the engineering part of the set. And he ain't like you doing that, and he quickly left and left Tamar grunting and grinding by herself on stage. And then towards the end of her set, which is probably was a 15 minute thing, uh, the dancers gonna come up there and just parade around her and gyrate a little bit here and there. And I'm like, what is going on with this mess? Okay, I was disappointed for her if she wasn't disappointed for herself, but I think she was because she kind of talked about it. And, of course, she was trying to blame blame Vince on this, that, and the third. But, you know, again, that's why I said to Tamar, to hey, Ma, you, you know, I ain't going to keep telling you. Anybody else in the world ain't going to keep telling you, hey, you can't have your man and your man being your business partner because something's going to be shady. If stuff ain't going right in the household, your business shit ain't going to go right either. Pretty much just telling you that's just how it goes. Sorry for me, cousin. But anyway, it just makes me mad when women don't understand that you can't put your business with your family life. You can't do it. It never works. Not really. Not if you want to be very lucrative because everybody don't seem like they're going to be on the same page. You know, and it has a lot to do about, you know, Satan come in, try to conquer and divide and, you know, put another person on a higher pedestal than what they should be on, making it somebody else getting the big head. And it just has a lot of division. And when you're dealing with somebody that you just know as an acquaintance or business partner, you can freely express what you feel, what you expect, and what needs to be done. You know what I'm saying? On a different level than when you're talking to somebody you grew up with, ate at the same table, went to the same functions, probably went to the same high school, college, and just that and third. You know, and you just had too much of them, and then they have their little you know, plots of wanting to do more or want to be in your spotlight because you happen to be the one that's shining all the time. I'm not saying that other people ain't going to shine, but just you happen to be shining at this particular time. And they want to, you know, doff some, you know, um, shade or put some shade on your shine. You know what I'm saying? Just usually doesn't work out for the longevity. But that's basically, you know, how she tries to tell Vince, you know, where was he? Why wasn't he on point? What happened to his dancers? And he come to look like, I ain't got nothing, I don't have nothing to do with that. 
All thing I have to do with it that I make sure you get here on time. I'm like, hey, all thing you got to tell her is where the venue at, where her dressing room at, who's her contact person, and what time she need to be there, okay? Or who I need to call in case something come up and I can't make it because, you know, whatever may be happening at the time. Vince don't need to be with you. Or Vince, you don't need to be her caregiver to make sure you ride on the other side of the seat, making sure she get down there. Are you crazy? She bought her dollars, her coins, her bag, whatever, how y'all speaking the money language these days. She gonna be there because she want to get paid. And the people that's following her, that's helping her do her thing on stage, they want to get paid too. So yeah, everybody gonna be on time, okay? So, you know, he just got small with her saying, hey, look at here, look at here. I got you here. That's all I was concerned about. Like, what? Now, brother, we need to have some conversation. We need to have some separation from the business and the marriage aspect. Oh, hey, let's dissolve, let's dissolve both of them and let's go and be happy without each other. Let's raise our son and this damn third and let's do us, okay? That's all thing I pretty had for the show because the show will whack, okay? Tamar needs to get her own little thing going. You know, something where I think she's supposed to have a, a talk show through the C. Um, uh, Harvey's type of forum. He's producing it or whatever. And she's, you know, her main thing, kind of like an uh, Oprah Winfrey type thing, like a talk show where she's having guests. She's interviewing them. She's, you know, the main spotlight. Tamar show. You know what I'm saying? Glad for her. Glad she's getting it. You know, hope it's wonderful. I will definitely be reviewing it. And, um, you don't tell them what she's wrong at some places, but uh, in places in what she's doing from a perspective, my perspective only. You know what I'm saying? But it's just, it's it's been over time for her and Vince to get their stuff together. Like, just cut it off. Cut it down. Cut because it, it ain't working no more. And ain't no sense of baby Logan growing up in no household when he become uh, a teenager and seeing all the destruction that a man is doing to a woman or how a woman is disrespecting a man. You know what I'm saying? They just don't need to see it. And this just need to be gone by. They need to go by their business and go on and do the thing. Okay? Go on and divorce. Go on and raise Logan the best way they can co-parent and let hell. Okay? Because I'm sure it's been infidelity on both parts. You know, Tamar's always been feeling herself. Okay? And you got Vince, the new improved Vince. He's feeling his self. You know, he biting on uh, Tamar, police records being filed, uh, different things happening between them. You know, marital disputes, domestic violence and all this. Ah, we don't need that on the record. It's going to separate, divorce, and get it. It's just a half, okay? But y'all, that was my little take, my spiel on Tamar and Vince season five, episode one. Yeah, I'm going to try to do all the seasons until they just go on about their business. You know what I'm saying? And I think Vince know. He wouldn't be anything really without Tamar, except for being behind the scenes, you know. <sighs> he just like to be up front in, in everything. He don't have no spunk to where you would want to watch him on a, a weekly basis, you know what I'm saying? Uh, one time during the week, him having his own show, because he's boring, okay? Without Tamar, he couldn't have a show. You know, without uh, Michael, there were no Jacksons. You see what I'm saying? You, you only have one that's going to bring out everything. Then you're going to have your extra people to make it spice up a little bit more. That's pretty much it. You know, he had a gold mine in Tamar. He should have fell all the way back, stayed in the back of the scenes, and came out when Tamar wanted to bring him out. You know, he could just been the driving force behind the scene. But now he wanted to be all up in the Kool-Aid, want to make all these different contractual agreements for Tamar to find or hold herself to and accountable, but he ain't gonna hold himself to none of it, and probably not tell her half of what needs to be going on in them contracts. But like I said, I blame that on Tamar because she did you read everything with a fine tooth comb. She need to be her own negotiator when it comes to stuff, and not letting people do everything and all the things for her. She need to have some input somewhere, and it's being solidified on paper. You know what I'm saying? Not letting my so-called husband manager do his thing. He might be mad at me because I didn't want to give him none last night and then he go fuck up the deal for me. Excuse me, I didn't mean to cut, but you know what I'm saying? That Things like that happen when you put too much proximity, uh, too many people in the same Kool-Aid that ain't already mixing and gelling together. You know what I'm saying? And then you have issues. Okay, and it kind of mess with the, you know, the dollar flow for the household. And we already are uh, angry at each other and mad and fussing at each other every day. And then the money messed up too. No, nah, the two shall not miss. Okay. The house that is divided will never stand. So, yeah. Okay. That was my take. Hope y'all tune in for 
be catching up on the episodes because I think they're on episode five now. Uh, and I'm just on one. So bear with me. If y'all like it, I'll continue to give you my spiel. If not, I'll move on to something else. This is how I get down. I don't, I don't have time to waste doing it for you all. And I don't. I know y'all don't have time to listen to me or what do you call it? Jabble on and ain't something y'all want to listen to. You know what I'm saying? It has to fit both of us. You know? For me to keep talking about it and for y'all to want to keep listening to it. You know what I'm saying? It goes both ways. It's reciprocated both ways. You know what I'm saying? Y'all let me know in the comments how y'all feel about it. Or I'll know by looking at the numbers where y'all grew to it or not. If not, hey, I'll move on to something else. Y'all may gravitate to that and we can blow up together. Who knows? Okay. Y'all have a great rest of your weekend and I'll talk to you soon for something. Bye. Or about something, I should say.